Hello again, fellow Cosmonites. Let's get some silicone in here. Because CG Channel asks, how would self-replicating nanomachines evolve? And also, a question within that question, what elements could life evolve from besides carbon and silicon? And what would those organisms look like? So, that's actually two questions in one. Let's look at machines first, because that's always more exciting. So, a prevalent sci-fi trope is that of the machine life, machine civilization, where they break off from humanity, their masters, and they sort of evolve almost like animals. And the first example of this in sci-fi literature is that of the von Neumann machine, a machine that makes a copy of itself. Now, this seems like a simple proposal, but if you realize, it's actually like a bacteria. So you send one of these robots to, I don't know, an asteroid or something. And hypothetically, they would make more copies of themselves, feeding on sunlight. So the entire stone, the asteroid, would turn into a swarm of machines and dissolve. It's uh, like something out of the Alien films. Ugh, I shouldn't talk more about the Alien series, really. Anyways, so you could see that how this is a somewhat dangerous preposition. And of course, sci-fi writers have followed up on this and they've come up with another trope called Grey Goo. Grey Goo is like that, you know, machines that make themselves, but at a microscopic level. So it's actually one of the most dangerous weapons because it would turn the entire planet into a ball of grey goo and it would be the end of all life, all material, whatever. And there's actually an antidote to grey goo. Machines that break down the other machines that make up the grey goo and that is called bl blue goo. And these are all sci-fi trope terms, you know. And of course you could see how this idea found its way into the Alien series too the black goo in, in Prometheus and Covenant. And if I'm not mistaken, very recently it's been revealed by Ridley Scott in the Alien Covenant DVD that the black goo in that film is a sort of artificial intelligence that can induce mutations. So that's their way of getting out of all those stupid plot holes and discrepant creatures, but it also ties into this thing, so machine-based life. Now, I think these are all a bit exaggerated, you know, because if you have machines reproducing, it doesn't make them invulnerable, you know. A tiny machine is suspect to the same problems and stresses that a tiny organism would be. So machine-based life, if people manage to create them at a scale small enough, would resemble bacteria with less redundancies and more streamlined designs and it would be less like a kind of biomechanical whatever. But there's also a second kind of machine life possible. And that's the kind of machines that build a factory that makes more machines in different models as it sees fit. So it's like a nest of electronic ants. Except in this case, the nest is also a machine-based organism. Something like a plant, you know? So, about this question, how 
would self-replicating nanomachines evolve? There are the two main avenues that I could think of. One would be a more or less straightforward progression from basically life 2.0 with more exotic materials and less silly things like appendixes or breathing holes that tie through your uh, oesophagus and things like this. So it would be more like those androids or whatever they would reproduce would be subject to the same selective and predatory forces and that the second version is the plant and ant version and this could be more interesting so you could ultimately have things like gigantic semi-organic quasi-metallic castles and in one type of castle herbivores live and they defend the castle and eat small plants that are also mechanically based. Maybe they are like little solar panels, you know. And they defend the factory because the factory manufactures them. And a few kilometers away, you could have a different type of factory plant machine biomechanical castle. And this is maybe a smaller plant. But it makes predators that prey on the herbivores, you know? And so on and so forth until you could get things like, I don't know, flying jet animals that travel between islands and they use things like torpedoes to hunt giant swimming robots, things like this. The greatest limitation in nature seems to be that we have non we have no detachable retouchable parts you know organisms are actually extremely resilient and they do a lot of things that machines just simply can't take a leg for example the engineers in Boston Dynamics are busting their balls to make this dog-like robot that walks but hey Animals had them uh, 600 million years ago. But there are parts that animals fall short too. And this, as I just told you, is in the field of retouchable parts. We can't really make things like wheels, guns, extrusions, things like a four-stroke engine. Machines, as we make them, channel far greater forces and they are extremely durable but they cannot reproduce and they are very maladaptive which means they require extreme upkeep, upkeep and caretaking to function life on the other hand cannot concentrate force as much you know, you don't have any animals that can travel even as fast as a city car, let alone at those weights. But life is better at staying alive. So you take these two together and you could have theoretically imagine organisms that can reproduce, but they're also like machines in a way that they can maybe manufacture bullets or giant pistons or wheels and integrate metals and far more stress-bearing substances into their bodies. So you could have really creative scenarios this way. Imagine it's like World War II tanks on a bigger scale that this families of tank-like animals that evolved on some future world where life descended from factory machines but their builders are long gone but these machines are still rampant on the planet so you got things like tanks i don't know once again grazing on petroleum deposits and there are other 
fighter panthers that hunt these tanks and they actually have gun-like things in their heads and it's a design-wise extremely exciting and open scenario and all of you should try creating these semi-machine life forms so that's that for nano machines now let's look at silicone based life now that's another trope and silicone based life forms usually feature in a lot of science fiction films books universes and especially in books they are usually portrayed as this kind of outer space almost robot or insect like strange things that that are so different from carbon based life forms that they are almost like mythical beasts i mean i remember in larry niven's known space universe there was a kind of silicon based outer space race known as the outsiders and these were like big squids made out of crystal or silicon and they would survive simply by putting one foot in the sun and another foot in the shade and there would be an electrical difference that would give them their energy and sustenance so for some reason silicone life is pictured as machine like whereas there's no solid reason for it to look like that now the trope of silicon life comes from a simple chemical fact you know when you look at the periodic table carbon is good at forming life because it's first of all common but most importantly it can form multiple strong bonds with many other elements making it a very efficient former and breaker down of bonds it's a very 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 versatile element and it can also bond with itself so it can create chains and extremely complex shapes giving rise to proteins amino acids so on so forth now if you look at the periodic table on the column the same as carbon there are different elements that can theoretically also form similar bonds and chains and one of them is silicon and below silicon there are also more exotic things for example germanium tin lead and even unun quadium which can technically be <laughs> i mean unun quadium only stays solid for a very short time so so theoretically you could have silicon based life and also germanium based life and in the uh, silicon based life oxygen would be replaced by sulfur nitrogen by phosphorus so on so forth hydrogen i don't know i'm not much of a chemist but the basics of the situation were as i just explained to you now for some reason we haven't seen silicon based life but if it exists and if it evolved in a more natural structure like carbon based life it doesn't need to look like a robot or a weird glass squid or something the environment it could exist would probably be different it would be higher temperatures but to those life forms that would be normal temperature and we would be freezing our asses off so if we saw silicon based life they would look like i don't know eels insects crawling things just organic life forms really on a wildly different habitat maybe an ocean of boiling liquid that's not water but some other chemical substance but it wouldn't matter to that organism that would be at home there because it would have evolved there so yeah silicon based life exciting chemistry 
but I don't think it would look as crazy as machine based life would look. Thank you. How do you think these things would exist? They would evolve. Please, let's talk about them in the comments section. Have a nice day, silicon based peeps.